Guys, that is a beautiful sight. Easy to repair. You don't have to throw it away and buy a new one. The stuff is meant to last forever. If you just take care of it, you can fix it. Guys, all the cars that you see in these videos are for sale on my website, www.woodsandbarclay.com. Enjoy the video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is the series on the 33,000 mile 1983 300SD. And today is the last uh, repair video before I do the walk around and the test drive. I have found two items that I wanna address on the car. The antenna, I want to put a new antenna mast in there, and the passenger side sun visor. There's a small crack, you know, they have those plastic uh, mirror inserts. There's a small crack on the mirror insert, and I see that on like 95% of the cars. That stuff just, it ages and cracks. So I'm going to put in a genuine Mercedes-Benz replacement. So let's get started. So let's go ahead and take a look. So let me show you guys here. So you can see uh, the sun visors. See, this one looks great. Uh, the, the mirror insert, and it works great. But these are made out of plastic. And over time, uh, if someone like pulls on it or, or just yanks on it or forces it, uh, you can crack this plastic. So I noticed over here on the passenger side, sure enough, right there. And it always happens right where the hinge is. See, a little piece of the plastic broke off. It's supposed to look like that, and you can see right, right there, the little corner piece broke off. Now, it'll still work, but on a 33,000 mile car, we cannot have that. So, I have a genuine Mercedes-Benz uh, mirror insert, the exact correct one that would have come in this car. So, we're going to take this out, and we're going to replace this. All right, let me show you how to take these out. It's very simple. There's two screws that hold the visor in, one right there. And we can just screw that out. And then if you fold the visor up, there's another one right behind it. We can just pop the visor out. And there we go. All right, let's get this over to the workbench. All right, we're at the workbench, and I just want to show you how common this problem is. Visor, 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 mirror inserts. And look at all these visors I've had to take apart and repair. 123s, 126s, and for example, here is a 123 insert. And it turns out the 123 and the 126 are the exact same part. Now, what I just ordered is, bam, a genuine Mercedes visor and here's the insert and this one has already uh, come loose but you see how we have no crack up here and on our 300 SD we have the crack so let's go ahead and replace this all right here is our um, donor piece and I've just pulled this uh, visor out of here and I want to clip the wires behind it because we're going to re-solder them We're gonna re-solder them into ours. So, okay, here is our um, our good our, our sun visor from the 300 SD. I've just taken the lid off. These are detachable. I'm just gonna set that aside. And now we want to carefully disassemble this and get this piece out without damaging this beautiful condition uh, visor. So let me go ahead and start taking this apart, and we'll work on getting it out. All right, I'm just gonna re remove these internals here. And you can get a little screwdriver right down in these two little slots, and then this will come apart. And then this comes out. See, this is good. That's not the problem. The problem is this piece. So now we have to carefully get this out of here. And unfortunately, it usually involves having to destroy this without destroying uh, the visor here. Okay, so we have successfully gotten the uh, old mirror out, and I didn't record that because that took me about 30 minutes. And basically, 
the way you do it, you like lift up, you try to get one edge up just a little, and then try to get where you can slice the glue behind it. And then you, what you end up doing is kind of slicing the glue as it, as it comes up and you can see it. And we got it out and see, we didn't damage the other side um, of the visor at all. Strip the wires, because we're gonna solder these Okay, let me get these soldered and connected together and get this inserted in here and I will flash back in one second. Okay, what's important guys, um, when you after you solder your wires together, make sure you cover them uh, with electrical tape. That way they don't short out against each other and pop your fuse. Um, now, before we glue this back in here, we want to uh, test to make sure our connections are good. And you connect 12 volt power right here to the clip. That's where it gets its power. So it should turn on. There we go. All right, good. All right, that's working correctly. We got the wires in there correctly. All right, now here is the important part. Um, we want to mix up some, this is the stuff I use. It is JB Weld Clear Weld Quick Setting Epoxy. It's a two-part epoxy. You don't want to use super glue because super glue, it gasses off and emits like, uh, like when you come out of your car the next day, there'll be like white streaks all the way around here. Don't use super glue for this. You have to use the epoxy. So all right, so I want to mix this up. And you want to apply it around the edges and then once it's applied, you want to put some weight on top of it to hold it in place until the epoxy sets. Otherwise, it won't be seated flush down in here. It'll like be sticking out, and that's an amateur job. You want it to look professional exactly how Mercedes had it. So once you get your epoxy mixed up, now epoxy is forgiving. If, it, if I get it on anything, I can easily um, wipe it off with a, with a towel. All right, what we want to do go right around our edges here we go right around our edges like that and we'll put some right here on this side edge over here and a little along the back and then we're going to set it down in here all right we're going to push that down in there and a little bit will squirt out when you do that. That's all right, just gonna wipe it away. Once it's set in there, we need to get a weight and set some weight on top of it. A couple of towels over it. And this is a 10 pound, 10 pound weight from the shop press. Oh, that's perfect. And this, this is another 10 pound weight. And this part's important guys. Now set it on there carefully. Okay, now you wanna let your epoxy cure. And you know, give it an hour or so. It says five minutes, give it an hour. All right, let's go work on the antenna and then we'll come back when this is done. All right, here is one of the reasons I like the uh, earlier model, like 83, 82. Um, don't get me wrong, I love the 85 models and the 84 models, but you can see we have a nice chrome um, antenna grommet. On the 84, 85 models, it's this, this cheap rubber that deteriorates. So what we want to do, here we go, get a wrench on there. Careful, you don't want to hit your car. And you just unscrew the top of this antenna. We're just going to change the mast. Now that allows the antenna, we'll set this to the side, and that allows the antenna to slip down in the trunk. So let's go in the trunk now and remove the antenna. All right, I don't know how, the, how good the view is gonna be, but here's our replacement mast right here. And there's some little clips under here. We just take those clips off. There's one there, one there, and then, we can pull back this inner or this inner fender liner. Sometimes it helps to pull off this uh, the light bulb cover here because 
it can get in the way. There we go. And set this aside. There we go. And there's the antenna. Okay, we have the inner fender liner out. And I can tell this is the first time this has ever been out of the car, guys. Uh, look how amazing it is back here. But uh, there is the antenna. And we just need to unscrew the little line right there. There we go. All right. Now, here's the plug right over here. We want to undo that plug. There we go. And so that's undone. Now we need to take out that one uh, Phillips screw right there. And look back here. You see all the original Cosmoline wax? Look at that. That's the original wax from the factory. Yeah, that's the original Cosmoline wax back in there. Pretty cool stuff. All right, that's it, guys. And then it just comes right down through there. And now we can get it over to the bench. All right, we have our Hirschman antenna on the bench. First thing we'll want to do is just remove the cover. I like these early antennas. It's, uh, in 8485, they want you to like, they just cheapened the parts. And uh, these early antennas like this, see it's a solid aluminum case with a nice cover that screws on and off. The 8485 just went to a cheaper plastic case with plastic clips that can break. And they also inserted a circuit board. You can see this one's all mechanical. So the first thing we want to do is get this antenna out. Loosen the antenna. It screws out right here. And okay, there we go. The antenna's out. Now, my guess is that the cable is actually broken. So I might be able to just pull this straight out of here. Yep, my guess is right. See that? The cable, the plastic cable is broken. Now, it broke. It means it's still wrapped around. Yep, there it is. I can see it right there. See the little piece of it sticking out? I'm going to probably remove this uh, assembly here and get that old antenna out of here. I'm going to have to unscrew a couple of pieces. Unscrew that bolt there, which holds the mast in place. We can pull the mast out, or the, the shaft that the mast fits in. And this just unscrews. Okay, pull that guy out. We're going to pull this guy out here. Okay, now I think I can lift this out to get access to that antenna. There, there it comes. All right. Now the antenna is wrapped around inside here. So there's another C-clip right here. There we go. This comes off and this antenna should come flying out of here. There it is. There we go. There we go. Now we got that old antenna out of here. All right, that's the part that broke, you guys. So let's go ahead and get this put back together with the new antenna mast. Actually, I'm gonna get a little bit of grease uh, to lubricate that shaft that goes through here. All right, just get a little bit of grease. It doesn't take much. We're just gonna put a little bit right in there, just like that. Reassemble that on there and put our E-clip back on there. Isn't it great how these are actually rebuildable? Stuff today just is made to be thrown away and this stuff just works. All right, good, we got our E-clip back on there. All right, now we can set this back down in here. Now what I wanna do, we wanna power it back up 
and put our mast back through here and feed it into there and let it wind itself back up. And I can see there's actually plenty of grease still left on the worm gear. There's your worm gear right there. Not sure if you guys can see that. Yeah, there's the worm gear. So I'm gonna put a dab of grease on that worm gear. Okay, good. Now I'm gonna put a dab of grease right here on that little pulley. Now we're gonna feed this back through here. Okay, now I need to hook up power and push the antenna. It's going to grab right there. There it goes. Aha! There it is, guys. All right, let me tighten this down here, and then we're going to test it out. Then I'll apply power and see if we can run the antenna out. There it goes. You see it, see it going out? Boom. All right. Now let's run it back in. There we go. You see it? And it parked. Perfect restored antenna. All right, let's get this back together and get it back in the car. All right, there we go. Now let's plug back in our power, I mean our antenna signal, and we'll plug back in our power. Now I want to put all this back together, but before I do that, I want to test the antenna. The little retaining uh, nut. I haven't attached that yet. Let's just go test the antenna. So let me go turn on the radio. All right. So let me put the antenna all the way up now. Boom. All right. Now I'm going to try manually controlling it and going down to like three quarter mass. Perfect. And now I'm going to put it all the way down. Mission accomplished, guys. We have a perfect working antenna. So now I want to put our retaining nut back on here. And I'm kind of pushing it from below because I want the grommet to line up exactly where the grommet was before. You can see a little mark on the car where the grommet was. All right, now let's reassemble the interior pieces. So right here we have that little plastic pin I pushed through that holds this piece to the inner liner. And then we have our little clip right here that holds this little flap closed. And that flap is where you can access uh, your rear bumper bolts. All right, now let's put this piece back in. Boom, there we go. That's back in place. Now, let's just go test out our antenna one more time. All right, before we do that, I just put a fresh bulb in back here. There's our trunk bulb. Beautiful. All right, let's go test out that antenna one last time. All right, I'm just gonna give it accessory power and we'll turn on the radio and then tell the antenna to go all the way up. Guys, that is a beautiful sight. Easy to repair. You don't have to throw it away and buy a new one. The stuff is meant to last forever. If you just take care of it, you can fix it. Now we'll turn off the radio. And we have a perfectly working original Hirschman antenna. All right, let's take our weights off of here. 
Oh, beautiful. Look at that, you guys. It's in there. Perfect. Perfect operating visor mirror, and there's no cracks around our bezel. Let's go put this back in the car. All right, guys, you ready to test out our brand new crack-free mirror? Remember the crack that was over there? No more crack. Beautiful. And we go to the driver's side. Beautiful. Perfect working visor mirrors. Mission accomplished. All right, everyone, that's it for any repairs I wanted to do on the 33,000 mile 300 SD. The next video is going to be the test drive and then the walk around. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. Take care.